Hey guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a Q&A slash get ready with me. I have some products I'm really excited to use, specifically this palette right here. So this is the Ace Beauté Aura palette. I recently received both this and the new Envy palette from them in PR. Aura is definitely the one that really speaks to me. I'm really loving like the pink and green and purple vibe of this one. Envy is very fun as well, even more outside my comfort zone than Aura. I mean, they're both very colorful, but yeah, I want to do a look with Aura today. And then I think I'll just base the rest of the look around whatever look I come up with with this. So I'm going to start with the eye look. I'm going to prime it with my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer today. I've actually been priming pretty frequently recently. I actually wanted to start this video with a small life update, well, really more of like a skin update beauty update, if you will. Um, I recently started back on spironolactone, which I, if you're not familiar, I was on it in 2021 for a few months for acne. It's uh, supposed to be a really effective treatment for hormonal acne in women. I went off of it because I started having pain in my back and specifically like right where my kidney is. I'm pretty positive it was my kidney. So I went off of it and um, the doctor did a bunch of tests and everything came back normal, but also the pain went away after I stopped taking it. So that was kind of weird. But then I think I realized the reason I was having that pain was because I was taking too high of a dose of vitamin D3 because I've had that pain on and off even without the spironolactone, but it was happening a lot more when I was on it. So for a while there, I wasn't planning on going back on the spironolactone because I felt like tretinoin was pretty much keeping my acne under control, which it was for a while. But over the past few months, it really started to come back. And on top of that, and this is actually the main reason I wanted to go back on Spyro is because I was noticing that my hair was becoming really thin. I think it was really just returning back to its baseline because I wasn't on any sort of hormonal birth control or spiro or anything that's going to level out my hormones and I do have PCOS and one of the common symptoms of PCOS is hair loss and I didn't really have I didn't really notice that hair loss was a big issue for me until the first time I was on spiro I by the way, if you don't care about any of this, I'll uh, go ahead and give you a timestamp if you want to skip ahead, because I know this is like a lot of information, but I just felt like updating you guys on this. So when I was on Spyro the first time around, I noticed that I had a ton of hair growing in, like just a ton of baby hairs growing in up here. And so that was what made me realize like, wow, I guess I didn't realize that I was missing hair. Like I didn't realize that that was one of my symptoms of PCOS that I struggled with. For me, it was always like the one that I dealt with the most was acne. But ever since really around the time that we moved here, which also is about a year after I stopped taking Spyro, was when I was really starting to notice like, especially like when I looked at my face in the mirror head on, up here, I just felt like I could see more of my scalp than I used to be able to see. So anyway, the doctor recommended that I try Spyro again. And this time I am on a lower dose. So the first time I was taking 50 milligrams, which is usually the lowest dose that they would put you on. But I decided to try 25 milligrams instead, uh, just to see if that would end up being effective for me because the 50 milligrams was very effective for my acne and um, apparently for my hair loss as well. So I'm hoping that 25 will be enough and then hopefully I won't have to deal with the adverse side effects as much. So yeah, I'm back on Spyro and I'm really hoping that it will work out this time. But similar to the first time that I started taking it, I noticed that my skin pretty much immediately cleared up, which normally they say it could take like a month or so for it to really start, for you to really start noticing a difference in your skin. But for me, the the change was pretty immediate and my skin's been in really good shape except for a couple of breakouts around my hairline which might just be due to hair products or something but really this is the main problem area for me and I do have like some post acne marks here that will fade over time but my skin has been looking really good ever since I started back on it so 
there's a little update for anyone who was curious and I can link below the video that I did the first time around kind of talking more about my acne journey if you want to like go down that rabbit hole and hear more from me about that I can link that below um, and I am gonna continue with the tretinoin as well because um, I do feel like that has helped my skin a lot it does definitely reduce the amount of breakouts that I get and it also is supposed to have some good anti-aging benefits there's that update I felt like I needed to catch you guys up on that because I've been meaning to talk about that recently so let's start out with this eye look and then we'll get into the questions okay so I'm gonna go in with Chi with this eco tools defined crease brush so I have played with these palettes only a couple times so far and this is actually my first time ever trying Ace Beauté really excited to finally try their formula I've been lusting after their palettes for the longest time they just have some of the most creative fun color stories and if you didn't know, they are a black-owned indie brand based in Texas. And so far, as you can see, these shadows are super pigmented. I just like barely tapped into that chi shade and I'm getting like a ton of color payoff. It, it's definitely showing up a little bit more like magenta. Um, I guess it is really a berry sort of red if you look at it in the pan, but it's pulling more magenta on my eyes. So first question, how's the winter in Seattle? So... This is actually my second full winter in Seattle. And, you know, obviously I haven't lived here my whole life, but I truly feel like the winters in Seattle are not as bad as people make them out to be. For starters, it really doesn't get that cold here. So t the winters are pretty mild compared to most places that are this far north. The coldest it really ever gets is like maybe the mid to upper 20s, but even that's pretty rare. Usually the lows hover around like the mid to lower 30s which i think is around like zero degrees celsius if i'm not mistaken so as far as temperature i would say they're the winters here are really quite mild and i think what most people complain about the most about seattle winters is that they are pretty dark being this far north i think we're on the same latitude as Boston if I'm not mistaken so like we're, we're pretty up there and so you know being this far north the sun sets around like 4 p.m. I think on the shortest days of the year it sets at like 3 45 which is pretty weird to get used to um, but honestly I I just I really don't mind the winters here I kind of enjoy how cozy they are and I mean obviously I moved here because I, I like the the weather here like I really don't find the weather here to be bad at all but I do kind of feel like people who've lived here for a long time don't quite understand how good they have it in terms of weather because this is a very temperate climate and it also doesn't rain as much as people it does rain a fair amount in the winter but really when it rains here it's usually just a light drizzle it's not usually like a full-on downpour although the other day we did have a full-on downpour which was surprising yeah as long as you don't mind like the really short days in terms of just daylight hours i really don't think the winters here are that bad yeah so that shade is really pulling very pink actually um i'm gonna try to build it up even more so next question what are you reading lately so i have recently gotten back into reading i recently got a kindle from a neighbor in our buy nothing group and it's like a, I think it's like a third generation, one of like the ones with an actual keyboard with the real buttons, which I kind of love. <laughs> I like how like old school it feels. And really right now I'm more into nonfiction is, is just what I'm feeling. So I recently finished Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. That was my first Brene Brown book that I've read and I loved it. I really want to read more of her books now, um, but that book is really all about the power of vulnerability and how like shame is one of the key driving forces of just all of the bad things in our society honestly so highly recommend that book i loved it and she writes in a very just conversational style so it, it's a it's a really pleasant book to to get through um, but it will make you like take a deep look at yourself and that's the kind of thing i really like and i've just been downloading books through the libby app where you can get ebooks through your local library. Uh, the only thing is a lot of times you will have to wait or you have to put a book on hold 
Um, and right now, <laughs> all of a sudden, I got like five books that I had had on hold like all at once. And I'm like, I, I can't possibly read all these at once. All right, I'm going to take some of Sultry now, this brown down here. But the other book that I'm about halfway through right now is called Rest is Resistance by Trisha Hershey. And uh, she is the founder of the Nat Ministry which I've been following on Instagram for a while and the, this book she recently came out with. Just a great book about how important it is to rest our bodies and how um, rest can be a form of resistance against capitalism. So that's been a great read. And the book that I haven't started yet but that I'm hoping to start soon is Atomic Habits, which I feel like has been everywhere this year. I feel like a lot of people have been talking about that book. So I'm just curious to read it. So I guess really my favorite genre, definitely nonfiction, but especially any kind of like either self-improvement or social commentary type books is really what I'm into these days. I really got away from reading after like in all of my adult life, really. I used to love reading when I was a kid and then I feel like school kind of ruined it for me, but I really do enjoy it and I, it's, it's just good for your brain to read. And so I'm just trying to do it and not think of it as like something that I have to do, but just something that I can do for fun, and it's been really fun. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to dip into Entrance now, this shade, and I'm going to put that out here. This is turning into a very, very pink look. Next question, any tips for growing your channel? Honestly, right now, post shorts. <laughs> post shorts on YouTube. I know not everyone likes shorts. I, I was kind of resistant to them for a while, but the nice thing about shorts is the algorithm for shorts, much like the TikTok and the Instagram Reels algorithm, it gives you a much better chance of your video going viral or just getting more views than you would be able to get on a long form video, especially as a small channel. And if you have a small channel, it can be really hard to just get your videos out there and get people seeing them in their feed. But the great thing about shorts is that they don't take nearly as much time to create than long form videos. So if you could just sprinkle in like one or two shorts a week or really as many as you can in addition to your long form videos, you really should because um, like for, for me, I've had a few of my shorts just blow up and they, these are videos that took me like 10 minutes to make. <laughs> like I almost didn't even make them, but I'm glad I did because I have actually recently gained a lot of new subscribers through my shorts. Next, I'm gonna use this shade, Moonlight, on my lid. This just looks like such a beautiful, like wet, ooh, yeah, that that is stunning. My favorite type of content is long form content. I think it's always going to be because, I don't know, that's just what I prefer. It's what I grew up on, I feel like, on YouTube, and I love getting on here and talking and just being able to go on and on and not having to condense everything down to like a one minute video. But my hope with the shorts is that it'll then bring, it'll just bring more people in to then hopefully also watch my long form videos. So yeah, that's my advice. Post shorts. Um, it really, you know, don't make it, don't overthink it. The nice thing about shorts too, and you can even like cross post them on Instagram and TikTok if you want to. But the nice thing about them is they're a lot more informal. People don't necessarily expect them to be like super high quality videos the same way that they do with long form videos. So yeah, just have fun with it. Um, even if you don't think you like shorts or short form videos, just try it out. But I really think in this, in this day and age, uh, shorts are definitely a must if you do want to grow your channel, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. But I like to look at it as just an opportunity to reach more people. Okay, that silvery champagne shade is so pretty wow okay in a weird way i i almost want to put this green in my inner corner i'm not sure if i'm gonna do that yet yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do my face makeup and then we'll come back to the eye look and see what else it needs so let's hop over to some youtube questions now moon girl asks do you experience anxiety and if so how do you cope i certainly do diagnosed and all. I actually only recently got diagnosed. This is something that I only recently started addressing. For a while I didn't even realize that I had anxiety because I think I just had it for so long that I just thought that was the normal way to feel. <laughs> and um, it's funny when I when Nathan and I first started like talking before we ever started dating he asked me like do you have it so you have anxiety right and I was like 
Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, like, yeah, sometimes I feel anxious, but I don't really feel like I struggle with anxiety, which looking back at the time, I'm like, you silly, silly girl. Um, <laughs> that is not true. And I think I realized the reason I let it go unnoticed for so long, aside from the fact that I just thought that that was like the normal baseline for everyone, but a lot of my anxiety symptoms are not necessarily the ones that you hear about all the time. So like, for example, I feel like when I thought of an anxiety disorder, I thought of like somebody that experiences panic attacks or anxiety attacks. And I, I've never had a full blown panic attack, knock on wood. So for my base, by the way, I'm doing a mix of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter and the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. Which, by the way, if there are any steps that I haven't mentioned or didn't mention, I will be listing everything I'm using down below, if you're wondering. But for me, I feel like a lot of my anxiety manifests in the form of procrastination. I've been a terrible procrastinator ever since high school. And, like, I'm not even talking normal levels of procrastination that most high schoolers and college students experience but like for example in college I remember I did not even realize how badly I was struggling at the time but I would put off an assignment that was that really it was it was it was like a big assignment that really should have taken like four or five hours to complete I wouldn't even start it until an hour before the class that it was due and I would just be it was like torture. Like I was, I was miserable. And I think back and I'm like, that's not, that's not really normal. <laughs> uh, you know, like maybe there's a problem here. Also, another thing that I always just thought like was weird about me is that I struggle to concentrate on things, which I know you're thinking, oh, maybe you have ADHD. I don't know. I've wondered that, but at the same time, I don't really know if I care to go through like the whole diagnosis process. And what I've also learned is that a lot of symptoms of ADHD overlap with symptoms of anxiety. And when I have my anxiety under control, a lot of those issues go away. But yeah, trouble concentrating, even having trouble concentrating during conversations, or I even remember like, this even goes back to like elementary school. I would be sitting there in class and realized that I totally blacked out and did not hear anything that, that the teacher just said when they were you know, giving instructions or something. And all of a sudden I'd be like, oh my God, like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing right now. And, you know, like, I just thought I was, I just thought there was something wrong with me that I was stupid, but, and by the way, I did really well in school. So there were no like red flags, I guess, for, you know, the adults in my life. Or no like glaring red flags where, anyone thought that anything was wrong because you know I always in school I was like super high achieving that's actually really common for people with anxiety um you know I would I you know I got straight A's even when I was having even when I started having the issues with procrastination and really like perfectionism is where that stems from which I'm trying to work on now because I've learned that like being a perfectionist that's not a good thing <laughs> It's not a good thing because it will paralyze you. So I didn't really start addressing this until very recently, actually. <laughs> Don't be like me, seriously. But that another, like, that's the other thing is, like, I also just thought that, like, I didn't have it that bad and that I was holding it together pretty well. And I have done pretty well for myself, you know? Like, I've, I'm really proud of my accomplishments so far in life, even having dealt with like, untreated anxiety for so long. And I also do get depression sometimes as well, but I do think that anxiety is my main problem. And then when that's really bad, then that can then trigger depression. And then it's like a vicious cycle, you know? If you know, you know. So anyway, um, I'm happy to say that I'm actually doing a lot better recently. And I did actually recently start medication, which I never thought I would do. Um, I don't know, I, like, I just never really thought about it. I never thought that, again, I just didn't think that I had it that bad. But I'm so glad that I finally did go that route because it's honestly been really helpful. It just helping me get my life back under control and put into practice different 
skills and coping mechanisms that really help with anxiety, like for example, exercise. So this person asked, how do you cope? So some things that have helped me, therapy. Unfortunately, therapy is just not accessible in this country. And um, I'm not currently in therapy because it's honestly just too expensive right now. Um, but I am hoping to get back into it at some point next year. In therapy though, the, the main type of therapy that I feel like is most effective for me, at least that I'm familiar with, is CBT or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And even if you're not able to go to therapy, you can even find CBT like workbooks online or just like exercises that you can do. And really the whole purpose of CBT is getting to the root of what's causing the anxiety, which is your thoughts, which I really like because, you know, coping skills, you know, exercising and, um, you know, doing breathing exercises, all that is great too. But really getting to the root of the issue, I think is super important. So that's been really helpful for me. And then the other thing that is also really helpful is exercise or just movement. I have recently started doing yoga again, which has, it's really huge for me. Like I really, I think for me, it's, it's almost an essential thing that I, I have to do because it really does help to just keep me grounded, just feeling my best. Even though I know the advice to, oh, just, you know, get exercise, move your body, whatever can be really frustrating to hear, especially when you're in a bad place because it's like, well, where do I find the motivation to do that? For me, medication has helped me just get to the point where I feel like I can actually start implementing these things that I know are good for me that are going to help me in the long run, like exercise. So, you know, don't write off medication, even if you never thought that you would need to go on medication or want to go on it. It has been really helpful for me. There, there's that. I That's actually something I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel, but it is important and hope I hope that if you are struggling, whether it's with anxiety or any other mental health issues, I highly recommend seeking out help in some way if you can. Um, you know, look online in your area if there are any like free resources or low cost therapy options. Um, and also just talking to your doctor if you have a primary care doctor and they might be able to help put, point you in the direction of resources that you know, whether it's medication or um, refer you to a psychiatrist or anything like that. Even if those things aren't available to you right now, just talking to somebody in your life, whether it's a friend or family member, teacher, mentor, anyone that you have around you. Yeah, don't be afraid to open up if, it, if it's somebody that you can trust and that you know is not going to invalidate your feelings. Really connecting with other people is, is super important. Don't isolate yourself. And then on a lighter note, if you could only keep five specific makeup products, what would they be? So let me do, go ahead and decide what types of products they would be. And then I'll decide what, what actual products they are. So must-haves, definitely a mascara and some sort of brow product. Those two are musts. Some sort of complexion product. I think powder also. I feel like if I'm going to have any complexion product, I need to have powder. Because I just, I really like to set my face. Or especially, you know, if I'm wearing under eye concealer, which is definitely one of my essentials, <laughs> is under eye concealer. I do really prefer to be able to set that. So, yeah. Mascara, brows, probably a concealer powder and blush and then I could hopefully multitask the blush to also be an eyeshadow because um, I don't have any room on my list for eyeshadow but so the mascara I would keep would definitely be the Milani highly rated anti-gravity this is my favorite brow product I think I would keep my NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Gel, which I will use in just a second. This I really like because it's kind of like a two-in-one. It fills in my brows, but it also holds them in place. So that is great. I think I would just keep a concealer and just spot conceal. And I would keep one that I feel like I can kind of also use as a foundation. I think I would keep my Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer. I think this is my favorite concealer at the moment. I really like this because it's very lightweight. And that I could use for my under eyes and just kind of to spot conceal. And I don't think I would really miss having like a true foundation because I could just sort of use this in place of that. 
and then powder everything else. The powder I would pick would probably be the CoverGirl Clean Fresh pressed powder. I don't have that one currently, but that is my favorite powder and uh, it does have a little bit of coverage so that would be nice to have. I think I would go with a powder blush so that I could use it as an eyeshadow. I could use a cream blush as an eyeshadow but those are a little bit more prone to creasing on the eyes. So I think I would just keep my Essence blush in the shade Befitting because it's just such a great neutral blush and I think that would be really pretty on the eyes as well. So yeah, those are the five things. <laughs> Uh, I would certainly miss having um, a lip product too, but I'm guessing like lip balm doesn't count So I could take some lip balm and then pat some blush on top. That would work. I could I could live with that I wouldn't be very happy, but I, I could live So next question, what do you do if a non cruelty free company tries to send you PR? Have you ever received non cruelty free products in PR and if so, what do you do with them? So usually brands will reach out through email and if a non-cruelty free brand reaches out, I usually will either just respond and say no thank you or I just don't respond at all. The only time I've ever gotten non-cruelty free PR sent to me was when I think a brand that I whose PR list I was already on, I think they probably used the same PR agency to contact creators. So they like had my mailing address in their database and then the uh, this other brand that wasn't cruelty free then i guess got my email through that and just sent it to me unannounced which um in that case i just um would just donate the products and that's that but yeah it's only ever happened once that i can remember where i actually got sent something that wasn't cruelty free so there's the nyx lipton snatch and it really it really does fill in my brows way more effectively than any other brow gel that I've ever tried, so that has been amazing. Emily from Emily's Makeup Bag asked, are you planning on getting any more kitties? No, we are not, at least not anytime soon. Right now, three is plenty, <laughs> especially in our apartment. I feel like three is really all we have the space for right now, so not anytime soon, but, you know, in the future, if we had more space, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to getting a fourth cat. I, I would love to get them a brother because I've actually never had a male cat. I don't know, I, I just have always had female cats and I would love for them to have a brother. I feel like it would be so cute. We got a tiny taste of that when we were fostering Ash, if you guys remember. Uh, in our last apartment, we did foster cats for a while and um, I've also gotten some questions if we plan to foster again, and uh, not anytime soon, once again, just because we don't really have the space for it. But I would love to get back into fostering again when we do have the space for it. Um, but when we had Ash, we kept him separate from our cats for the most part, but one time he did run out of his little room, and he and B, it seemed like they like immediately hit it off. B was also a kitten at the time, but she was a bigger kitten than him. And she tackled him and he was like totally cool with it and just he seemed to like not be scared at all. He was he was like ready to play with her. And so I that made me think like, oh, it would be so cute for them to have a little brother. My hands are so dry. Like, do you hear this? Ooh. I'm trying to decide if I should put this green in my inner corner. I might start by just putting some on like this inner part of my lid and just see how that looks. Like, is it light enough to go in the inner corner? I feel like it'll work. All right, let's 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 just do it. Let's just do it. I saw Lauren May Beauty wearing like a yellowy green in her inner corner in a recent video and it made me want to try it. So I'm just going to put a, a not, I'm not going to put too much. But just a little, yeah, that's kind of cute. I'm going to take a little bit of my Flower Chrome Crush Press Pigment just because I love it. I'm going to use that as a topper over the green just to add a little bit of sparkle to that. That's so fun. Okay, another cat question. I love this question. What is your favorite thing about each of your cats? Okay, so let's start with Heidi because she was my first baby. Um, so, okay. My favorite thing about Heidi is her wild imagination. All right, some CoverGirl Espresso liner here. She is so creative <laughs> and imaginative. It's it's just, it's so wholesome and precious. So like in our last apartment, we had, 
in our bedroom, we had a, a small perch for the cats by the window. And so many times we walked in on Heidi just standing there on her perch with her paws on the windowsill, looking out, holding her little caterpillar toy in her mouth, her favorite toy. It's this little orange caterpillar. It's disgusting. She would just be standing there holding it in her mouth, like gazing out longingly into the backyard. And we think that like she must have been just standing there imagining that she had just caught like a squirrel or a bird or something. And we, we had to have walked in on her doing that like at least 10 times. Like she was, she was, then there was a span of like a few weeks where we kept finding her in there, just, just standing there. And it was always at that window, always with the same toy. Uh, and then a lot of times like we'll walk in on her, like just playing by herself in here. She also loves to talk to herself while she's playing <laughs> or like maybe she's like talking to her toy. I don't know, but she's just the most pure, innocent, wholesome kitty. Like she does not have a mean bone in her body. She's so gentle. Like she, we always joke, like she would never make it out in the wild because she like, she is just too sweet. Sometimes Tala and B are mean to her and she doesn't know how to defend herself. Um, but yeah, she's, oh my God, she's so precious. And then Tala, she's the oldest of our three cats and she was Nathan's cat slash is Nathan's cat, but he had her before we were together. And okay, one thing you should know about Tala is she is likely one of the main reasons that Nathan and I are together now. So if you didn't know, Nathan and I used to be roommates before we started dating. Um, we lived in like a townhouse with like two other people, so there were four of us total. And Nathan and I were really just acquaintances, but Tala would always be with me in my room. Like she would just, every chance she got, she was in there with me. She would sleep in my bed every night. Like she, she was always with me. And so Nathan took note of that and was like, wow, like, I guess if Tala really likes Sarah, maybe I should talk to her and like get to know her. So really Tala is a big part of the reason why we are together now, which is so sweet. So really Tala, my favorite thing about her is her wisdom. She, so she is the oldest of our three cats. She's about eight. Um, and by the way, Heidi is four and B is one. But Tala seems like she just, she knows what's going on better than anyone else. She seems like she's lived many past lives. And because of that, she's a very calming presence to be around because she she really, she doesn't really get anxious. She knows what's going on and she has everything under control. And um, I, yeah, she, she's just amazing. So the third cat is Bee. She's the youngest and Bee is the only one that we've had since she was a kitten. So we've seen her grow up and like turn into the cat that she is now. She is nuts, okay? She is the most chaotic of the three. And B, she's a chimera, which means she has that distinct line straight down the middle of her face, which means that before, she, like when she was in the womb, she started out as two cats and then it kind of fused into one, to put it in very simple terms. So we always joke that B, there's like at least two cats living inside of her. But we also feel like her tail is possessed, so there's like, there's a lot going on with, with B, okay? Okay, so the look is coming together. I think for my lips, I'm going to do this combination. The Koki Lip Liner in Dusty Rose and the Urban Decay Lipstick in Local, which is in my everyday makeup drawer. Um, but yeah, B, my favorite thing I think about her is her enthusiasm and her, and her curiosity, which I feel like those two things go hand in hand. Like she is very, she's very energetic. She's always down to have a good time. And she wants to know and understand everything. And I think like, especially when she was a kitten, she was that way, which actually that's very similar to her angel sister, Elaine, who sadly passed away before Bee was born. Elaine was our kitten that passed when she was only four months old. We miss her every day. Um, but funnily, Bee has a lot of things in common with Elaine. One thing that Bee has in common with Elaine is just her, her, 
like insatiable curiosity like if she if we're doing something she wants she needs to know what what we're doing and she needs to be part of it or if like we bring something new into the apartment like a new piece of furniture or something i mean all three of the cats are this way but especially b like she she has to know she has to know what it is she has to smell it and touch it and like understand it and i just love that about her she's just so her she has just such a pure like zest for life and it's it's very inspiring. <laughs> I love our three cats if you can't tell. I, I strive to be more like each of them every day. I feel like I'm always learning so much from them and I love them so much. Like if I loved them anymore I think I would explode. <laughs> it's just oh my god they're they're everything to me. Ugh, not to get all sappy but man they're great cats. I think that's gonna do it for this Q&A. The look is done and it you know it turned out very like colorful and kind of springy but really fun. So I'm having a lot of fun with this palette. It's really getting me out of my comfort zone. I really still need to venture into like this chartreuse color and, and the purples as well. I haven't really dipped much into those but I'm excited to keep playing with that and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. I don't think I'm going to do a dedicated video on these palettes because unfortunately I think I kind of missed the window <laughs> there. Um, there's like a very short window of time where you can post uh, a video on a new palette before like it's old news and no one's gonna watch it but I will continue to share looks with these I'll probably do some more looks in some shorts and I'll also be sure to share like my final review once I've tested these both out more in speed reviews or some some kind of video you will hear my my thoughts on these but anyway thank you so much for hanging out with me today for submitting your questions I had a lot of fun just chatting with you guys I feel like we talked about so many different things today um, but yeah, as always, thank you so much for being here and I hope you're enjoying Vlogmas. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on next videos. I'm going to be posting every day until December 12th and then I'm going to have just a lot more videos coming throughout the rest of, the, of December as well. So I hope to see you back soon and I will talk to you later. Bye!